Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Um, just wanted to go over uh, some of the books that I'm looking at as I move into the world of Python. Um, yeah, so I've accomplished my last goal to learn uh, Tim, Tim Sykes, his psychology, his courses, his approach to penny, penny stocking. Uh, I'm going to do a review on that, but uh, my other big goal for uh, the fall uh, was to get into Python and uh, to use it just to, just to uh, again, attack it from a better angle. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I think are probably the, the two best books that I've seen if you want to learn Python, because as I said about Python uh, over the last week or two, Python is honestly too big to ignore. Um, it's free, but in terms of the uh, how it's so entrenched in a lot of the big shops, specifically the HFT shops, um, I've shown uh, all the jobs that um, jump trading are using for high frequency trading, as well as I've confirmed um, a lot of movement towards Python with uh, over at the Citadel and uh, I've heard a lot of whispers over at banks as well. I think uh, Bank of America is doing a huge Python move as well or migration. So knowing that, looking at some research papers as well, more of the advanced quant stuff, I've been seeing a lot of the bigger quant researchers uh, that put out research papers uh, also put out their uh, code equivalent from the math <clears throat> notation into Python. So it's just one of those episodes, you just can't ignore it. Um, where does it leave MATLAB? I think MATLAB's still a very, very, very important. Um, I'm still using it, um, but as I move in from out of the world of hedging more into the futures and options, you know, I, I, I really only want to write one system and do it the right way with, um, as I said, high frequency trading in mind. And uh, obviously that, without a doubt, is C++ in a Linux environment. And I've also hinted on my last webinar last night was uh, focusing on the order book of level two data, which is very important. And because with a mindset of, of following in suit with what the HFT shops are doing today, not three, four years ago when my Python wasn't as big as it is now, where MATLAB was the choice and, and a few other languages, but clearly uh, Python seems to have won that battle. So as, as part of my big plan is to start uh, looking at Python and seeing what it can do for me and indirectly for everybody that's following me and I appreciate that. Um, I pick up a lot of new people over the last little bit and judging from last night uh, we've had I think three times a normal amount of people come out for my C++ hedging demo. Um, so in fact I might have to actually upgrade my go-to meeting to go to webinar to handle the bigger crowd beyond 30 people, which is great, um, and I appreciate it. But uh, let's talk about uh, the Python stuff. Um, okay, there's two books. Uh, one of the biggest struggles, if you follow me over, I don't know, the year, the months, uh, I've always struggled with Python getting it set up and installed. The key to it is um, I'm finding uh, on Windows, I don't know if I can really say, but Windows and Python don't seem to go together as well as, let's say, Python on Linux, specifically Ubuntu. Um, it, it's nice. I, I move along much faster with the ability to do just an apt get install with Python with a pip, and I, everything seems to run much cleaner and better than under Windows. So that's one um, thing I would strongly recommend. Also, the two books um, that uh, I recommend, the first one is, I've already done a review on it. I was pretty impressed with this book, actually, back in July. Uh, I did a review on it from Quantstart. Uh, it's quite good. The one thing I really like about it is the ability to, it just walks you through how to set up your, your, your environment from scratch. Uh, and that's really important because if I'd known about this book, let's say, four or five years ago, I really don't think I'd be looking at either R or MATLAB, in fact, and, and gone and put all that investment into something like MATLAB. Even though I don't regret it, MATLAB is still my girlfriend and will always be my girlfriend because I spend so much time with it. But Python uh, seems to be, with the, the community in Python has really mushroomed and the level of documentation has really come about. So the Quant Start book is an excellent book to start with. It, it gives you a great overview 
of um, the markets and some of the models and so on and so forth. I'm sure you already know about it. It's quite popular. All right, so the other book I'd recommend is this one. Um, doesn't seem to be so popular. Um, this uh, Mastering Python for Finance. Um, I actually put this on my reading list. Let me just uh, load up my new reading list that I actually put out uh, last week. Um, it's quite a bit of books, but um, let me just pull, pull her up. And uh, this new book that I'm just mentioning is on that reading list. Uh, you know, because I would put the uh, the quant start on there, but um, there there is quite a bit of uh, overlap uh, between the quant start and the um, the uh, this other one. Uh, let me just see. Is this one I'm looking for? No. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Okay, um, I'm going to actually talk about uh, R as well, my thoughts on R in a little bit. Okay, so we've got this um, Python set of books here. I don't know if it's not really Python, but a lot of them revolve around Python and C++. This book I cannot recommend anymore. This is an excellent book for just, just financial programming C++. Get it. Um, and... Uh, really really eat that up because I think this is where a lot of the horsepower will come from any system uh, that you work on. The other one that I really like is um, huh, I don't have it listed on here but I thought it was. <laughs> um, okay so this book here I would definitely put on on that list. As you can see in this list we, um, we've got some interesting books here. Uh, Pandas uh, which is one of the more popular quantity Python packages. Uh, obviously, data mining, big data. I'm going to show that in a minute. Um, practical financial. Oh no, we just talked about it. this one as well. Core application programming. And this book is is I think is going to get really popular. You're going to hear I think in the next while game theory is going to be big in quant and 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 how that will apply to the world of trading. Um, uh, I think it's Ed, it's Ed Thornton or Ed Thorpe uh, who, who's got a whole big section in a lot of the stuff that I've seen on just um, applying the logic of, of betting in poker. So I would not be surprised you'll see more and more of talk of this in the world of quant coming down the pipes. Okay, let's talk about this other book. Before I start, um, do check out this review of my quant start. Put this in the blog post uh, so that everybody can can refer to it. It's, it's good. Um, yeah, and you can see it's a 20 minute video. This video will probably be, you'll see me ramble on about this one. Okay, so this is the book um, I'm talking about, this other book. Um, and as I said, there is some overlap between this and the quant start one. Um, but the, the interesting thing is uh, the, the, the key difference that I see between the two. What am I, what am I doing here? Uh, uh, I, I broke. I broke Amazon. <laughs> I'm very good at breaking things. Uh, hang on here. Let me just uh, let, me, let me go back here. Uh, I want my table of contents. Table of contents. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Um, okay. So the big overlap between Quant Start and this book is this book. Um, both books assume that you you know Python. Um, I think if you if you're strong in and programming, as I learned, are on the fly. Uh, it, it, I sh I'm hoping it's possible to do the same thing with Python if, if you're strong in in, in, um, in uh, programming. Uh, if not, um, you might want to start with a better language, probably C sharp, just to get your teeth wet. Is that right? Teeth wet? Get your teeth chop, chomp, chomping on things. Yeah, because this. Do you think between? This book and the other Python may overwhelm you, but I think uh, uh, that Mike, Michael, uh, the dude at um, Quant, Quant uh, Start said there's a good one, um, learning Python the hard way. I think I've already kind of looked at it, but I'm hoping I don't need to uh, get caught up in that. Anyways, um, regarding the um, environment, which is kind of challenging in itself, uh, okay, this this author talks a lot about is Python for me. The answer is obviously yes. Um, what versions do you work with? What per, per, this is really important because this is this is where I get really ticked off about the the Python movement. 
from what I've seen, there's the, the three X and the two point seven world of Python. Now, this one will go on about IPython um, and the importance. Okay, let me, let me just talk about the environmental thing with Python. From what I'm seeing, from where I sit, this little paragraph talked about. Um, that the world is still in the world when it comes to quant finance is still working in quant 2.7. I just do the fact that a lot of the major um, our, uh, Python packages have not been upgraded into 3.4, um, the current version. Now I played with that a few days ago. You have to build all this stuff from scratch, which kind of kind of surprises me. But uh, maybe there's something I don't know. But uh, it can be done. But the argument seems to settle on Python 2.7 is where you need to stay, okay? And you just worry about the packages, um, the major ones. So let's work out. And then the other big thing is this pip, which does all the upgrading to all the packages. You need to have that installed. IPython notebook, it seems that everybody uses this. Everybody uses this. If you, if you follow me, MATLAB, um, UPAD is the equivalent of this, but this IPython's free. All right, so this chapter just goes on about um, different models, non-linearity, linearity, as if I'm an expert in this. Um, but uh, here, you'll see another big um, package, SciPy, and some of the other um, packages that are used in the world of quant finance when it comes to uh, Python, in the world of Python. And then we get into numerical procedures, options pricing. And that's that's a big cha-ching for me because that's where I want to really play when it comes to trading. Applied mol uh, volatility modeling. Let me just break off here regarding C++. Um, in the last week I've revealed uh, C++ financial recipes. Um, this is where it gets confusing for people, I think, because a lot of their development will go into uh, Python in terms of modeling. And building models in Python. I'm not saying that's not wrong. That's not my approach. I want to put all these same models into uh, C++. So I'll be playing with this stuff within the book, but um, my end target system will be built really mostly in C++. And with that PDF I just mentioned, the financial recipes uh, is going to be a big, big help there to, to, to ensure that these kind of models that get built are, are reside in the C++. I think this is the same approach as if you were with MATLAB um, and, and, and Python and then moving everything into C++ just for speed because this stuff this stuff is, is, is slow. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to argue on that. Interest rate and rates derivatives, I mean, that's pretty high-end stuff. I don't see a lot of little people playing in that. Mind you, if there is a, a, a financial meltdown, this is probably the only place you can kind of move into. And of course we have Python V stocks, uh, with the volatility, um, there's smarter ways to play that if you ask me. Uh, it's called implied volatility. Um, big data with Python, I'm not sure if this is really really needed. But here um, there's a Hadoop, there's Cloudera, I, I don't know. I think that's just all getting caught up in trends. And then you have the NoSQL, the MongoDB. Mongo's good, um, again, I don't know if I'm going to really play around in this world. Um, I, I personally think this is, again, getting caught up in buzzy stuff. I, I, I've done my metrics on Mongo versus Redis. Redis blows the doors off of any of the databases out there because, you know, Mongo is a more all-purpose database, but Redis is really designed for just specific types of data, and it's really good for um, for things like time series. And um, if you've been kind of watching me the last few days, you, you, you'll hear, you'll hear me less talk about time series, but more level two, and that's just that HFT uh, in potential mindset kicking in. And then, of course, we get into the really good stuff in this book I like, is uh, the quant start doesn't really talk about it, but he does talk about the um, I, IB Pi connection into interactive brokers, again, if you're going to trade in interactive brokers, this is one approach, and this is where it gets really interesting. Oanda for those that want to do um, that want to do uh, forex. Um, this is really good. Uh, I might actually do this, but to be honest, the broker level, uh, I think IB is your best bet. Even 
over OAN in the world of um, of uh, forex, just due to the fact that this, the, the the research that I've seen, OAN I, I don't think does any manipulation of any kind. I mean, I'm sure they both do manipulation, but when you factor in some of the more questionable forex brokers, I don't want to name names because they just got lawsuit happy lawyers over at their camps, but more questionable forex brokers and 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 I'll t I'll I'll drop the hint if they support a meta trader um that's a good sign <laughs> that they are corrupt um some of the bigger more well known ones are are probably corrupt but less likely corrupt but if their only platform they support is meta trader for and that's been coming up lately a lot uh in conversations I've had with people through Facebook or YouTube or whatever um, that's just a warning sign that your your broker is corrupt if they only support MetaTrader 4, okay? You need to be aware of that and run. Um, a good example that may not be so bad is Oanda or Duca's Copy. They do support MetaTrader and they do that because everybody's on MetaTrader, but they have their own uh, platform. Like Oanda has an excellent mobile app and they also um, uh, do support um, Java as well. So that's that's a, that's a big deal, and that's big differentiation between these companies like Oanda and maybe even Duca's Copy invest more time into their technology instead of just being some schlocky, crappy uh, forex broker that only supports MetaTrader. And I know that as a fact because I know some of these guys where they get the MetaTrader license, the server, and they're paying probably a quarter million dollars to four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars to license the server and then they that's how they're able to give away the client of MetaTrader to their customers and um, the brokers are just 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 evil um, I wouldn't recommend them if they only support MetaTrader okay that's just a warning sign I'm trying to be friendly advice now the difference between Oanda and interactive brokers uh, the stats that I've seen just generally interactive brokers customers that do exclusively Forex trading um, a very higher percentage of them are actually profitable even Oanda is not too bad, but still, interactive brokers, those that just, again, play only in Forex on interactive brokers are more profitable. And I, 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 I bring that back to, well, they're just kind of trading against you somehow. Okay, so there's coverage of both the Forex and or Oanda and the interactive brokers in this book. Now, let's talk about this backtesting kind of, I don't want to say nonsense. A lot of people get caught up in backtesting, not saying this is bad, um, but uh, you, you got to realize that backtesting is not the end all and be all when it comes to quant strategy development. Um, to be honest, uh, it's nice, but that means your strategy is very static in the market, and uh, when the market turns against you, what then? Your, your strategy kind of kind of is that static. You either have to shut it down or lose money. Your choice. And that's where everyone focuses on backtesting. Backtesting, I can verify from the words of Dr. Ernie Chan, he's only using it for verification. That's it. Even if I come off of um, my uh, Tim Sykes courses, he does the same. He's verifying it. But he's not dwelling on it. He's not like saying, oh, my, my, my strategy looks great now in this static set of data and now I'm going to throw it in the market and watch it flop. Well, that's why, because you are so reliant on backtesting. Um, that's why. It's just not a smart way of developing strategies in my mind. Not saying this is bad, it's just you gotta, you got to really change your approach. Um, and, 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 and in essence, uh, what you really need to more focus on is what I'm doing on the courses that I've learned on the futures and options trading is to really analyze the data, analyze what's going on in the markets in real time. That's what you focus on. And uh, you, you can calculate your market direction based on that. And using something like Greek analysis, you can grab and, and calculate the probability of market direction from Greek analysis. Okay, I'm just putting that out. That's just my view right now as we move into it. Excel on Python, fine, fine, fine if you want to stay in the world of, of, of uh, Windows. Uh, as you know, my struggles with Windows and Microsoft are, are uh, well, <laughs> it's a done deal. Let's just put it that way. I'm moving more into Mac and, and Linux. I think with uh, Windows 10 and what Microsoft's trying to do, 
privacy security is a big deal to me now, and uh, with the new Windows 10, um, they just don't seem to care about that. They're just forcing it on people. But what they don't realize is more and more people are moving off of Windows and Windows technologies, just based on that. And and just you know, I I don't trust Microsoft and never really have. I'm not saying that .dot net and all those technologies are useless. They're not. It just it seems to be a huge movement towards C plus plus, Python, No SQL, um, Linux, which is obviously all those are all free. You, know, you can't complain. The other big takeaway I want people to realize is you gotta gotta get out of um, depending on other libraries. Uh, back in the day when I learned from the the big the big successful, um, we'll just add, we'll just say multi zeros on their on their their checks or, or what they're bringing in, um, yeah, they, uh, they uh, don't rely a lot on dependencies. I mean, these books are great, but where your development should be going into C++ and building out your own uh, mathematical um, algorithms. And then having MATLAB connect into it, and um, yeah, that's where this book that I mentioned, the, um, where's my reading list? This book talks about that. There's a chapter on that that will show you uh, how to uh, have Python connect into C++. So that's probably what I'm planning to do. Okay, so that's the set of books that I'm looking at right now. I've given you uh, a list of what I'm moving into. Um, I'm still questionable on data mining and applications. I think it's important. But um, to me, I don't know if the right way or wrong way, but you know, sometimes don't get caught up in what's the popular way. Um, because as I keep saying, if people are start suddenly playing with dynamite would you too because <laughs> it's popular so that's just my view um, but I think the next big conquest I have is learning Python and getting to that level of, of really knowing it really well I don't know MATLAB to say I'm an expert but I'm really comfortable with it to know the ins and outs of it I'm kind of wanting to get the same level as um, Python and actually I was going to talk about R okay so we're 22 minutes in blah 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 I know I'm world famous for it, I guess. Okay, let's talk about R. I've spent six months learning R. The development in the environment is much better. I'm going to tell you, it's way better than than, than, than Python will ever be. Um, Python, I think, is far more advanced. Um, there's more uses for it. It's more wide scale. R is just specifically for, we'll just leave it the word, um, strategy development. And from what I've seen, if you're trying to port R code in a C++, yes, you can use RCPP, which is big for that reason to bridge it. I don't think that's a smart way of doing it. Um, uh, some of the, we'll call it insider HFT code that I've seen, when they say microseconds and milliseconds matter, it matters. And um, the performance of, let's say, a standard um, function in C++ that's used as part of the core standard um, libraries, um, like, like a SPRINF equivalent of that, versus if you wrote your own, uh, you can shave or you can you can whittle that performance down to one-tenth if you write your own. So R is not going to be very useful. Again, R is fine for prototyping, um, but to bridge it, it's a no-go. But again, it depends on your goals. Um, I've talked to a lot of young people. They seem to want to go into HFT. Uh, I don't want to blow anybody's bubble, but um, to be honest, if you use either R and Python and you put all your algorithmic uh, development libraries in either language, in R or Python, you'll be sorely disappointed that you won't get the performance that you would expect that you need when you sit on an exchange in the microsecond level, because it's only the only language that will give that you to you is either C or C++, and that is a fact, Jack. And that's a very complicated uh, development uh, path to go down. Uh, I call it whacking in the weeds. It's very low level. The code that I'm seeing, again, I mentioned it earlier, the older book, level two. What we're talking about in the world of C++ is literally working on registers, working on uh, in the, like inline assembly. It's really hardcore stuff when it comes to performance 
on your processor. Okay, that's that's key. You will not guarantee you will not get that in, in C or sorry in R or Python. Yes, you can use all these fancy schmancy um, uh, uh, packages that for high performance and parallelizing. That is not the way to go. I think you've got to do it right on the processor level um, to get that kind of performance if you are planning to go HFT. Now, if you're just doing basic automated trading at very low frequency, which is fine, uh, yeah, stay in Python. These books that I just showed you is perfect for that. Quantstart, perfect for that, if that's where you want to stay. But if you want to move into the HFT, the true HFT stuff, none of this fake HFT that I keep reading, no different than quant, quant, fake, quant stuff. <laughs> um, but to be honest, you've got to do it in C++. That is the only way. Um, using MATLAB is still doable, um, but I'm realizing people just don't have 50 grand, 100 grand. The majority of my community don't care about me, um, and they're not following me. So that approach that I did a few years ago uh, is not going to work from a business model, from my point of view. So here we are in Python and R and C++, all the free open source stuff. That's what I'm focusing on now, it seems. But I'm still um, going to pull in as much as I can of MATLAB from my stuff, uh, mostly charting and whatnot. But that's just my view of everything, the direction everything's going, and this, uh, this uh, reading list. Because everything is just moving in these technologies, R, Python, and C++. That's where it is in, in Linux as well, okay? And the, the strategy uh, development types is all revolving around all this uh, game theory and stuff, but I'm definitely taking a different approach to that as well. So hang tight, um, enough rambling, half an hour of me rambling, I'm pretty good at that. Um, hopefully I stuck it out. Uh, maybe I should just put all my best stuff at the end to force people to uh, listen to me <laughs> but uh, if I was to type this up it would take me a month and, and you don't really want to read my bad spelling anyways that's why I do videos all right so just another thought but the key takeaway is Python 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 um, so um, yeah this book here this mastering Python for finance and to set up your environment uh, definitely this quant start book okay hopefully I'll be out talk to you later